Now I'd like to very conceptually describe how air resistance works. Normally in introductory physics when we discuss projectile motion, we ignore drag. The reason for that is that drag is quite complicated, and it makes things difficult. It's not particularly difficult to understand conceptually, but it really gums up the math and makes the math horrendous. So what I'm going to do here is try to give you that conceptual understanding without worrying too much about the math. Basically, the magnitude of the force of drag depends on the airspeed. The greater the airspeed, that is the relative speed of your projectile through the air, the greater the force of drag on it. The direction of the force of drag is going to be opposite the direction of the object's airspeed. So I'm referring to its relative velocity to the air. The actual dependence of the magnitude of drag on the airspeed is quite complicated. And the reason for that is that air is complicated. It's a fluid. It can move in all sorts of ways. The individual parts can move in different directions at the same time. That's what's going on with turbulent motion. And this can interact in a very complex way with a projectile. In other situations, it's a fairly simple function. But in all cases, it's a monotonic increase of the force of drag with the relative velocity of the projectile. So I'd like you to remind yourself right now how an object behaves when the net force acting on it is zero. So read through these options and pick the best one for yourself. I hope you said that it's a constant velocity motion because that's what Newton's first law tells us. Zero net force equals zero acceleration. Zero acceleration means constant velocity. I'd like to describe projectile motion under the influence of drag in a very simple case that is of an object being dropped from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. So what's going to happen is the object is going to initially accelerate downward under the influence of gravity. Then as it goes faster and faster, the drag force is going to get stronger and stronger. And eventually the force of drag will exactly equal the force of gravity and the object will no longer accelerate. That's what we call terminal velocity or terminal speed. You're probably familiar with that idea in the context of skydiving. So we'll describe three basic phases in the motion of this dropped object. First, immediately after it's released. Second, as it is speeding up to terminal velocity. And third, when it is at terminal velocity. I'm going to adopt the opposite convention from what I adopted when I was talking about trajectories before. Here I'm going to say that down is the positive direction and up is the negative direction. So the force of gravity will be in the positive down direction and the force of drag will be in the negative up direction. Let's look at the airspeed in these three phases first. Initially, when the object is dropped from rest, it hasn't had time to pick up any speed. So it's got zero relative velocity with respect to the air. In the transition phase, while it's speeding up to terminal velocity, the airspeed V is between zero and the terminal velocity V sub T. At the terminal phase, well, then the airspeed is just the terminal velocity, V sub t. The force of gravity is the same at all three phases of this process. Initially, gravity is pulling down on the object with the force mg. As it's speeding up, gravity is pulling down on it with the force mg. And at the terminal phase, gravity is pulling down with the force of magnitude mg. The force of drag, which opposes gravity, well, initially is zero because there's no airspeed. As time goes on, as the object picks up speed, the force of drag increases. And then when it reaches terminal velocity, the force of drag is exactly opposite the force of gravity. The object is no longer accelerating. So as it's speeding up, the force of drag is between zero and the maximum possible value of negative mg. The net force acting on it is the force of gravity plus the force of drag. So initially drag is zero, gravity is mg. So initially the net force is mg. In the terminal phase, the forces of gravity and drag exactly cancel each other, and the net force is zero. In the transitional phase, mg gravity is greater than drag, so the net force goes from mg to zero over this transitional phase. The acceleration is just the net force divided by the mass, so initially the acceleration is g. At the end, during the terminal phase, the acceleration is zero, and in between, the acceleration is decreasing from a value of g to a value of zero. So to summarize what's going on in these three phases, in the initial phase, the velocity is increasing at its maximum value, which is the gravitational acceleration. In the terminal phase, the velocity is constant. In the transitional phase, the velocity is increasing. It's still speeding up. However, the rate at which it's increasing, the acceleration is decreasing. Now I'd like you to practice what I just described.
for this object, release from rest, dropping to terminal velocity, I'd like you to sketch three kinematic graphs, an acceleration time graph, a velocity time graph, and a position time graph.